Star Trek and Across the Universe by the Spitting Image. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, so I just want to say we are the original Sex on Toast. Hi, I'm Phil. I'm JJ. Welcome back to the Distorted Trumpet Show. We have the second in this two-part interview series where we play no guitars or trumpets or pedals and instead we're just hanging out having a game of pool and uh, last time JJ had 30 questions for me we've got the same 30 questions for JJ so we will see what we get up to JJ to break I believe yeah. uh, You haven't broken it have you? Uh, I think I brought last time yeah. at the end of the last episode okay. Which, I mean, it was a week ago. It was a week ago, yeah, yeah, that's hard to remember. Uh, right, first question, how are you today, JJ? I'm alright. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say I'm a little bit tired because I've just returned from weekend in the Pyrenees. Nice. Very nice. Uh, please introduce yourself. My name is JJ. Um, I am originally from England. And I live in France now, uh, in the Bordeaux area. Um, I've been out of England for quite a while. Lived in Italy for a few years in the US before I met my where I met my now wife, who's French. We moved to uh, to we moved back to France about eight years ago, nine years ago. Um, yeah, originally I'm from. I grew up in Nottingham. There we go. Cool. That's it. Still an open table. Uh, it is, yeah. Uh, when did you start playing your instrument? My instrument. So I started the guitar when I was 16. Oh. So um, my parents, could you move the uh, sheet? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I did okay in my exams and I GCSEs at the time, so still GCSEs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And as a present, my parents said I could get what I wanted, and I wanted a guitar. Um, cool. So I bought a classical guitar when I was 16. Um, kind of in, maybe not very interesting, but um, when I was about 14, I wanted, I asked at school if I could learn the violin. Oh. And they told me, no, you're too old. To, uh, to learn a musical instrument. Really? Yeah, which I think is uh, pretty disgusting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I like string instruments. Yeah, right. Nice. Um, what is the album that you first bought? So, <laughs> the first music that I bought was. Um, Star Trek and Across the Universe by the Spitting Image. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, so, yeah. so Spitting Image was a sort of topical news comedy show yeah. in in the UK, made with puppets. Yeah. And they did uh, that song. They did. Um, nice. I like that. Might have to find a clip of that and just drop a little snippet of it in the video mute. right about now. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, what is the most recent album that you bought? The most recent album I bought was I was I went to watch the twentieth anniversary of the Darkness Permission to Land. Um, <laughs> Signed gatefold edition blue vinyl nice. with a poster. Very nice. Where's, where's, the, where's the poster? It's I haven't <coughs> stuck it up yet. We're in the middle of uh, oh, right. putting things on walls and redoing yeah, yeah. walls, so it's still in the uh, still in the record. Nice. Uh, what was your best live performance? 
And whose shot is this? Shot. <laughs> is it my shot? Yeah, you're the spot. Um, so actually, my best live performance was was recently. Um, I played in a sort of rockabilly group, Wild Jive, um, and we were in a battle of band, battle of the bands recently. Um, just a local place, and um, it, I would say it was the the best time that I was animated as a guitar player that I was uh, when I was doing my solos I was walking around had my wines kit on yeah walking around the audience hamming it up a bit for the audience you know giving yeah, it yeah, all yeah. the sort of not really rock star because it's rockabilly rockabilly star yeah um so for me that was my nice my best performance and how did you do in the competition we won the competition get him mm. get him Want some uh, vouchers for a music store? Beautiful. <laughs> to buy some more guitar pedals. Oh, well, it's for the band, not just for me, unfortunately. Um, I'm, I'm alright for guitar pedals. At the minute. <laughs> um, what was your worst live performance? Well, so many to choose from. So, um, so when I started playing the guitar, um, I took some night classes, which are sort of adult education in the UK. Um, they were both for well one was classical guitar, like proper classical guitar, and the other one was acoustic guitar. Um, neither of which really interested me. Um, so really what I'm saying is that I didn't really have any lessons for a long time. I've never really had any lessons, let's put it that way. No, I'm self, yeah, self taught. Self taught. Right. So I remember there was a time when I, we were about 17, maybe. We were still at school, so maybe let's say between 17 and 18. So probably been playing a year and a half. We played at a festival in the group that I was in. Um, and I can remember us trying to do Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. Right. And it just being appalling. Yeah. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I could play. We had a really good drummer. Right. Drummer was excellent. Yeah. Bass player was good. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what possessed us to play this song because I don't think we'd ever tried. All the play. Shoot, that's right. Yeah. So. Good for the drummer. Yeah. So that was it. It was, it was terrific. Right. And also, it was outside. Um, you know, at some sort of farm. So there was no sort of. You need kind of something behind you to push the yeah, sound forward. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when did you first start playing with guitar pedals? Um, pretty much from the beginning. So um, we'll come on to bands later. So I'll we'll save that. Um, so I had I had a Carsbro amp for my first band. And I had a flanger pedal, either a Digitech or a Dodd, probably. And then an American metal pedal, um, which I bought for a kid at school. Um, I think that was probably it. Right. Um, and I've still got the recordings. Um, I do intend to put them on Spotify one day. Hi Tom, yes I will do that. <laughs> Um, and they actually sound okay, right. surprisingly, but yeah, so I just threw them in front of the amp. And then I didn't buy another pedal, because I didn't play a great deal, and didn't really understand the value of the pedal, because I didn't really have anybody to follow, it was before YouTube. If, if YouTube had been around when I was a kid, yeah. I really think that would have okay, been we'll better a lot earlier. Um, until... The early 2000s, when I was playing with a group and I needed a volume pedal, I was looking online or in a shop to buy a volume pedal, and then I saw that secondhand on eBay, I could buy a Boss GT6, which was like a couple of years old. It was like a Boss multi effects which had a built-in treadle, which could be a wire, could be a volume pedal. Yeah. It was basically the same price. It was about 120 quid to buy this Boss GT6 or about 100 quid to buy a volume pedal. Right. 
So I bought the Boss GT6, nice. and it was my only, the only thing I had for probably 10 years or even more. That was the only pedal I had. My original pedals are still somewhere in my parents' loft. I'm hoping to find them one day. Oh, and my original amps, they're not PV amp. I had. I'm really hoping that I stumble across those pedals one yeah. day. So I'd love to That'd be cool. That'd be see cool. them out. Um, right, transitioning nicely go, onto the next question. Hmm? You'll go, right? Um, no, it's your other. Uh, tell me about the evolution of your pedal boards. Okay, so we've, we've spoken about. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing when I was st first started playing. I had a f flanger and a distortion pedal. I had no idea what I was doing. Then I had this Boss GT6, which was great, and I used it for a long time because it could do everything. Mm. Again, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, it's quite complicated to get, even now, for me to set it up properly. <laughs> it's yeah. quite hard. Um, but really, the evolution has started when I really started playing again seriously. So I, I started playing again about 10 years ago, seriously. Um, and then... Similar to me then. Yeah. Exactly. Um, started to get some decent guitars and then I picked up a couple of pedals. So I picked up like a, a Zoom multi-effects that somebody my wife was working with was selling um, <clears throat> and then never really got on with them and then finally I started buying some some pedals and they've come and gone they've come in and they've been sold pretty quickly and the thing that made the biggest change was I was just frustrated with um, <clears throat> not knowing what to buy and then buying something and it not really sounding like I wanted to it was probably the amps that I was using. I didn't really understand that you need a decent amp that mm. works as a pedal platform that you can put amps in front of. <clears throat> and at that time I was using a Vox Valve Tronics, which is a digital amp with modeling in it as well. So it was a horrible choice to put pedals in front of. So, right. um, but finally I got, I got a Helix HX effects. <clears throat> it's not the full Helix. It's, it's a stomp box with, uh, eight foot switches and it's just the effect so it's not the amp modeling but it's got something like 350 pedal models in there mm. so i had a wah pedal an hx effects and maybe a tuner for a while in fact when we first played together i probably had something similar to mm. that maybe i had a compressor, a oh, delay and a reverb, yeah. uh, but something fairly basic. Mm. <clears throat> so this very standard size pedal board that hopefully you might see in a, in a future, future show. Um, and I just found that I was really liking pedals and really, really enjoying it. Um, and I was limited by the size of this, of this pedal board. So, um, and then you met these other two musicians and we started doing all this experimental stuff. Yeah. So I just got into, I think the thing that really made the difference was um, when I bought that synth. Yes. I bought the, the Boss SY300, which is a great big chunky synth pedal like that. <clears throat> and that with the HX effects, which is a similar size, don't fit on this very standard size pedal board. So now I've got the monster, the beast, which yeah. is this sort of size. And very quickly it runs out of space. So um, I currently have got two pedal boards. I have my kind of gigging board, which is my vanilla, yeah. <laughs> straight down the line, just basic blues, rock and roll style pedal board. There is a synth on there, but I mainly use it for sort of bass and chorus. Mm. <laughs> um, and then the Monster, which has got all the really fun stuff. Yeah, nice. Cool. Um, and do you give your pedal balls names? No. No. We need to address that. Uh, well, this is the monster. <laughs> yeah, right, well, yeah, that's a good name. Um, what is your favourite guitar make? <sighs> I 
So my first guitar was and still is a Gibson Marauder. Um, at the time, um, it was the only guitar I could afford. This was, you know, back in the late eighties, um, and there wasn't lots and lots of quality guitars or places like Harley Benton that sold <clears throat> excellent cheap guitars. Um, and it was a much unloved um, 1975 bolt-on neck Gibson's version. That's the Gibson's version of the Telecaster. So, ah. one first Gibson's ever bolt-on neck. Um, and it was I hate it because it's not wasn't a bolt-on neck Gibson isn't a real Gibson right <laughs> um, so I picked it up for very I think like 175 pounds which was a lot of money at the time mm. um, but now you know you could go somewhere towards putting a zero on the end of the value of that um, <clears throat> and because of that I like Gibson so I own quite a few Gibson guitars, but um, I'm a big fan of Parker. Um, I don't think we've seen any of my Parkers on the channel yet. I've got a Parker Fly, which is fantastic, and various of the cheaper Parkers, um, which I like because they're original. Um, then um, I've got Duesenberg, which is fantastic. Um, I've got, very recently I've acquired a Gretsch, which I think is tremendous. It's really been a sort of dream guitar for a long time. Um, and I'm a big fan of Fender because I think the necks are fantastic. I think a maple, all maple neck is brilliant. So I don't really have a favorite. <laughs> I would say it would probably be Gibson, even though I'm kind of a bit Ask me next week, I'll tell you different answers. So at the minute, it's Gretchen Gibson. All right. And who is your favourite guitar player? Or oh, trumpet player? <laughs> I go for guitar player. Um, I don't really have a favourite guitar player. Um, but what I can say is the, the guitar players that have influenced me. Um, and. The first bands that I was really into. Have we had the, the question on which music? So in, in terms of my musical history, when I was about eight or nine, I copied off my one of my sisters, um, Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, and the greatest hits of Simon and Garfunkel. Right. And they were the first bits of music that I owned, you know, the first time that I owned a cassette tape and it was mine and I could play yeah, it yeah, for yeah. myself. And they were the first pieces of music that I felt belonged to me. They were, they were mine, they weren't my parents, you know, it was something very personal to me. <clears throat> but the first band that I really got into as a sort of teenager, 14, 15, was, was The Cult. Mm. And um, so Billy Duffy playing a Gretsch White Falcon, mm. that sort of classic image of him playing that is um, is one of my favourite guitar players. And I saw them recently on a 40th anniversary tour. Um, and he's actually, I was in the front row and he's actually, a, he's a very simple guitar player. Mm. Surprisingly, he has an amazing sound, which is very clean and simple. And, yeah. um, so I'd say he was the first person who pushed me in a direction to love stuff. I mean, beyond that, I think you've got people like Jimi Hendrix, who just turned the world on its head. Eddie Van Halen, who yeah. was came from outer space. Yeah. But I'd say Billy Duffy because he pushed me in that direction. Right. Um, if you could jam with any musician living or dead, who would it be? Um. So. Um, I mentioned that I saw The Darkness recently. Yes. Um, Justin Hawkins um, in The Darkness is an incredible singer. He's got a natural five octave range on his voice. Um, but he's an amazing guitar player. Mm. He 
the ability that he has to be jumping around, jumping off the stage, and then just suddenly slings the guitar over, knocks out a killer riff, yeah. and then just throws it to his tech, carries on jumping yeah. around. I think that is unbelievable, the, the talent that he has to, to mix the two. So, um, and also join that concert that I went to see, um, he played like a 10 minute improvised bluesy type jam on his own and it was nice. killer, it was amazing, blown nice. away. Nice, that's just, just um, The next one, kind of already answered what bands you've been in up to now. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. No. So, oh, well, so what bands have you been, been in up to now? So my first band... <coughs> oh, sorry, I read this wrong. Sorry, I thought it was an inter... What bands have you been in? So what bands have I been in? Yeah. So my first band was a band called Sex on Toast. <laughs> um, I, I, think they, I think officially I was... They'd started before me. So Sex on Toast formed um, because one of the guys, Johnny, uh, Johnny, um, <laughs> he wrote the name on a pencil case and thought, oh, that'd be a great band name. That's it, when he was younger. Yeah. Um, he had, he was, he is a keys player and he had a um, Casio keyboard and our first song, Sex on Toast, the anthem, yeah. um, Obviously. was the, uh, the demo track on uh, the Casio keyboard. <laughs> nice. um, so I was in Six on Toast. Around the same time I was in a couple of other bands. The only one that ever played gigs was a band called Lamentations. Less said the better. Um, I was in... Um, and then joined... Collaborated with a friend I still collaborate with. Um, who we roomed together at university. Um, we've been through several iterations. For a long time, we were called TSA. Um, the idea being, oh, what does TSA stand for? But that was before it became the Transport Security yeah, Administration. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was actually stood for the sniping asshats. <laughs> um, um, do you know, I was just about to say that. <laughs> um, and then we changed our name to Wild Disguise. Um, so, still out there. Um, then the Electro Jazz Trio, yeah. with yourself, Wild Jive, the rockabilly band we're playing. I play in a, 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 a guest guitar for a group called Monaco um, here in the last couple of years. Um, that's enough. <laughs> cool, good answer. Oh, um, no, hang on, hang on. There's something I need to clear up. Yeah. Um, so, I'm in this group called Sex on Toast. Yes. It started when we were 16. Um, we're still in it. So we we try and get together once every year, once every couple of years. So we did play together last Christmas. Nice. Um, now, we started that band in 89. Okay. In the early 2000s, an Australian group called Sex on Toast, mm. the same name. Right. Um, hit the big time. They're they're quite big in Australia. Okay. Um, they've got a song called Loretta or something, which has got tens of millions of plays on Spotify and stuff like that. Right. So I just want to say we are the original Sex on Toast. Yeah. That's it, and that's a bit annoying. <laughs> if you're watching Sex on Toast, Sex you need Australian to Sex on Toast, you need to change your name. <laughs> um, right then. What music do you listen to when you're on your own? Um, so for me, music is uh, driven by mood. Um, so it really depends what I'm doing. If I'm at work trying to concentrate, and currently I'm listening to, or well, one thing I will go to is um, the Green album by oh, yeah. um, Murder the Name. Yes. The Japanese. 70s ambient artist, we'll put the link below. Yes, <laughs> I can't remember his name. Um, that's really good for me to focus. If I'm looking to get pumped up, it might be I don't know, some Iron Maiden or Metallica. I'm actually a big fan. If I'm like, in a bad mood, I really like the much hated Saint Anger 
album from Metallica. Yeah, I don't mind that Because it's just so... It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it it's says crazy. what it says in the thumb yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally, yeah. Um, then, you know, I was a huge fan of Blur, so I've listened to Blur. Um, the Cult, um, there's a really good song that a friend recommended to me lately that I can't stop listening to, which is Jubilee Street by Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. I keep listening to it over and over again. As, as well as a and by Lana Del Rey that I've got on a playlist. I've got a playlist at work which just seems to pick out the most popular songs. So this is what I'm listening to the most at the minute. It's Jubilee Street by Nick Cave, a and by Lana Del Rey, um, Dummy by Portishead. Right. Um, and Grimm. So that's nice. what I'm listening to at the minute, but it, it varies but not moving. Really. Cool. Um, okay, some quick fire stuff. Star Wars or Star Trek? Um, I have never seen Star Trek. Star Wars? So it's Star Wars. Good but, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm only into four, five, and six. That's fine, that's a completely respectable answer. Glass half full or glass half empty? Try to be full. I'd say I'm like that all the time. Yeah. What is your favourite pedal? You to name one. If I had to choose one pedal, uh, it would be the Boss SY300 because it can do anything. It can act as an interface. You can do mounts up, you can put an expression pedal in it. I sometimes use it as an interface just to get a normal distorted guitar sound. It's got reverb. You can use it as a normal guitar pedal mm. and you can do all the wild stuff with bass and synth and you can play guitar and bass playing. If I just had to have one pedal, it would be that. Cool. Um, what is one thing about you that very few people know? Um, well, working in a corporate environment, you have to ask, ask this question quite often, right? It's an icebreaker. Um, so the one that I use for that is that I have raced internationally um, in rowing representing Nigeria. Okay. And, uh, wasn't expecting that one. Yeah. So I'm a Nigerian athlete. <laughs> okay. Uh, James Bond or Jason Bourne? Yeah. Good, good question. So I love James. I love James Bond. Um, in fact, one t one time, I my poor wife. Um, had to suffer us going through the whole James Bond franchise from beginning to end. And some of the early ones are not the easiest watches anymore. They haven't aged very well, some of the early ones. So I love Bond. Um, I like Jason Bond. I think it's really different. I really, really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I think it's really, really interesting. But I'm a James Bond guy. Who? I um, can't wait to find out who the next Bond is. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's, I think it's supposed to be that guy that was in. Didn't know. Supposed to be Mafia. Girl. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. well, we shall find out. Uh, if you play chess, do you prefer to start as white or black? Two shots. Um, I do play chess. Um, I don't care um, because I play very aggressive gambits. Um, so it doesn't matter if I was to, I had to pick up first white, play white because you can dictate the play of the game. Uh, where did the idea for this here podcast come from? <laughs> well, as you said. We were chatting about pedals, what works, orders, and why we chose one pedal. Why does a reverb need to come after a distortion, yeah. or should it? But really, that's not strict law and stuff like that. And yeah. we both found that we were enjoying having, oh no, that conversation. Um, and uh, I'm not recall. Our idea actually was just to set up a camera and just chat. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Maybe we should do that in some episodes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, outboard pedals or software plugins? 
So, um, oh, I thought it was going to be a very quick answer. It is a very quick answer, but for a reason. Um, I just bought a new computer, um, and it's my first computer since 2013. Right. Um, and I still haven't played my guitar into a computer with a plugin. It's just because. Uh, Prior to, let's say, the last 10 years, I would always play it through my GT6 mm. and then record my GT6 yep. without everything on it. Um, and then my last computer couldn't handle plugins and guitar, or the late latency was so slow it was unbearable. Okay. So I've never played my guitar with a plugin. I think we need to rectify that in a future <laughs> yeah. episode. Yeah. Um, playing with headphones or playing through an amp? Through an amp. Pool or snooker? Uh, each one has its merit. If you're in a yeah, pub, you yeah. want to be playing pool. Yeah. Um, so when I was at university, we had a, we had a couple of snooker table staples in my hall. So every morning and every evening, we play snooker. Nice. Um, yeah, proper full size snooker. Yeah. yeah. We don't want to be doing that in the pub. Is it my go? No, it's mine. Uh, Shrugging out the wind. Uh, <laughs> 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 Alright. Uh, I'm just tempted fair by saying that. Uh, what is your morning routine? That's rubbish. It's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I've got uh, I've got two young kids, so there is no problem. There is no way in time. Fair point. Um, which five musicians would you pick for your super group, living or dead? <sighs> Five musicians from a soup. Ah! Oh! Oh, well. <laughs> Get some shots. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't pop the black. Okay. Um, five musicians. So it depends what sort of music I wanted to play. So I think I'd need a good singer. So I'd probably. Um, I'd probably get two singers, Freddie Mercury, nice. play the piano as well, and then probably Paul McCartney, who's yeah. a bass player as well, because yeah. then I've got a couple of, couple of box ticks. Yeah, nice. Um, I need a drummer. Yes. Uh, Probably something jazzy, like uh, was it Stuart Copeland from The Police? Yeah. Go for him. One, two, three. Um, a lead guitar player. Um, I would say Jimi Hendrix. Sorry to copy you. Right. Um, just because it's allowed. He, he was very correct with his guitar playing. Like he only played it when it needed to be played. Yeah. You know, it wasn't flashing, it, yeah, yeah. it was spot on. Yeah. So we've got guitar, bass, piano, singer. What else do we need? Keys, everything's covered. Um, so let's just throw in a throw in a hero. Um, I mean, I'd love to play with Billy Duffy. There, we go. there you go. Good enough. What can we expect in the future from the Distorted Trumpet Show? Well, <laughs> um, we said when we started this project that we'd do it for, for a year, right? At we least did. a year, see if we, we, see if we enjoyed it. We're yep. still enjoying it. We are. Um, we only tickled the very surface of, <laughs> like of uh, the pedals that I've got. Yeah. But I think what, what I would like to do is something more. What, what I'm looking for is something that I was looking for when I first started playing again, which I struggled to find um, content that wasn't people who I just felt were insanely more talented than me. Right. Which I found uh, put me off, right? Um, so I would say 
something a bit more how to's I think would be better okay. for for the for your average punter rather than virtuoso stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's what I Fair think. play. Uh, where are you from originally? We've covered. And yeah. lastly, guitar or trumpet? Guitar. <laughs> cool. Well, good game. It was, again. yes, again. <laughs> trumpet one. Yes, trumpet one, that one. On the pool table. Yes, awesome. Enjoyed that. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thanks for watching. We will see you again soon. Adios. Bye-bye. Oh. Nice. La, la.